Benjamin Netanyahu's remarks serve as a strategic maneuver to discredit protesters and bolster Israel's historical and cultural legitimacy. His pointed criticism highlights the protesters' ignorance and hypocrisy, contrasting sharply with the authenticity and personal responsibility he emphasizes. Netanyahu's words resonate deeply with the public, framing the protesters as misguided or influenced by malign forces like Iran. For all we know, Iran is funding the anti-Israel protests that are going on right now outside this building. Not that many, but they're there and throughout the city. Well, I have a message for these protesters. When the tyrants of Tehran, who hang gays from cranes and murder women for not covering their hair, are praising, promoting, and funding you, you have officially become Iran's useful idiots. Some of these protesters, that's amazing, absolutely amazing. Some of these protesters hold up signs proclaiming gays for Gaza. They might as well hold up signs saying chickens for KFC. These protesters chant from the river to the sea, but many don't have a clue what river and what sea they're talking about. They not only get an F in geography, they get an F in history. They call Israel, they call Israel a colonialist state. Don't they know that the land of Israel is where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob prayed, where Isaiah and Jeremiah preached, and where David and Solomon ruled? For nearly 4,000 years, the land of Israel has been the homeland of the Jewish people. It's always been our home, it will always be our home. Netanyahu's criticism branding protesters as Iran's useful idiosyncrasies underscores a stark dichotomy. He positions Israel's actions as rooted in a profound historical and cultural narrative essential for protecting the ancestral homeland of the Jews. This rhetoric not only questions the motives of the protesters, but also challenges their understanding and authenticity. Are they truly aware of the implications of their actions? or are they merely pawns of a greater, malevolent influence? By invoking themes of authenticity, personal responsibility, and historical continuity, Netanyahu's remarks aim to evoke a powerful emotional response. He draws a sharp contrast between the protesters' values and the brutal actions of the Iranian regime, painting a vivid picture of a struggle for freedom and equality. This strategy creates cognitive dissonance among the protesters potentially leading them to reconsider their stance while simultaneously galvanizing his supporters. For Netanyahu's supporters, his remarks are a clarion call, reinforcing a sense of justice, solidarity, and collective identity. His references to historical and cultural roots fortify a deep emotional connection to the cause, fostering pride and unity. The polarized public response highlights the intensity of these emotions. Supporters see Netanyahu's statements as a robust defense of Israel, a necessary critique of those who oppose it, and a reaffirmation of Israel's moral and historical justification. In sum, Netanyahu's rhetoric, laden with emotional undertones, seeks to discredit his opponents and solidify his base using a mix of historical references, emotional appeals, and stark contrasts to drive home his message.